Hello, and welcome to Focus on Education. I'm Laura McLean, Vice Chair of the Oak Ridge Schools Board of Education, and my guest here today is Dr. Bruce Borchers. Welcome. Thanks, thanks. Um, I believe you've been the superintendent here for nine? This is year nine, it's hard year to believe, nine. but year nine. Wow, and yeah. we just extended your contract, yes. so we're planning this on you good. being here. That, that's great, and that starts this, so yeah, that'll be like 14 years. Wow. That, that's great. Wow. Well, it's so good to be back in the seat and to see our, our student cameramen and our student sound folks and Dave. Um, we've taken a break because of COVID, but we're glad to be back. It does feel good. Yeah. It does feel good. Yeah. Back to normal. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, um, wanted you just to talk a little bit about your family uh, and, and what's going on with them? Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, I'm married to my uh, wonderful wife, Shannon, and we've, uh, we'll have our 29th anniversary coming up uh, this wow. June. So, so uh, the, she's a dental hygienist by trade and now an office manager at the dental practice that she was a hygienist at. So she's doing well. Uh, and then I have two children. Bailey is 25, actually uh, went to UT for her bachelor's and now getting her master's degree in guidance counseling and doing an internship right here at Oak Ridge High School. Right, uh, I saw her well. at a, a school uh, event and I was like, I, I recognize <laughs> I know that her. Person. So yeah, yeah. Good. so she's, good. she's doing that and enjoying that experience. And uh, she's married to our, uh, my son-in-law now, uh, Zane, and they had a uh, COVID wedding. So they got married June of 20, and uh, that was an interesting experience. We won't take time tonight to discuss all of that, but it was a wonderful wedding, wonderful wedding. And he is a middle school band teacher at Farragut Middle School. And then my other uh, child is Jack, uh, Oak Ridge High School graduate, and he just turned 22. And uh, he is a pipe fitter out at Y-12, working on the uranium processing facility and, and really enjoying his work. That's great. And he was um, in the welding program. He, he was, he was. And the automotive. Automotive, yeah. He took advantage of a lot of those things and, and truly uh, moved him ahead in his internship. His apprenticeship is what they call it. Uh, because of the skills, the welding skills he had already developed here, he moved a couple of years ahead just because of what, the, what happened and the training he had here. That's great. Yeah, That's yeah. fabulous. So they're doing great. Yeah, yeah. And we, we love it here, like you said, nine years. And uh, uh, this is home to us now. So we just love it here. Great. Very yeah. good. Okay. So one of the new things we're hearing a lot about is portrait of a graduate. And I wanted you to like fill us in on, on what exactly that is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think people, uh, for the long time, we really talked about uh, the seven keys to college and career readiness. Right. And we were very excited. Uh, about the work we've, we've done with that, or we did with that. And we were at that for about four or five years, mm -hmm. and, and we wanted students uh, you know, to take an advanced placement class. You mentioned the industry certifications, dual enrollment, or, or Navy JROTC. And when we first started that, we were about at 72%, and then when we sunset that, we were about 95%. So just a really huge growth, and uh, I think our community got behind that, and our, our district got behind that. Uh, and then that kind of morphed and we had two things going on, Oak Ridge 2020, and that had a lot of goals for uh, departments like HR, business, things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, so we had those two things kind of side by side, both great uh, uh, strategic plans, but we thought it was time to go to the next level, the next step, and that really is how the portrait of a graduate came to be. So. Uh, for most districts, and it, we're not unique, there's not a whole lot of districts in Tennessee that are doing a portrait of a graduate, but those districts that typically do a portrait of a graduate are usually just focused on the high school. So what makes our portrait uh, different than many is that ours is pre-K 12. So we're all working on these, uh, these five pillars, if you will, in our portrait, and, and that, that just keeps getting moved up to the various levels. So. Uh, it's exciting. It's kind of our new strategic framework, and uh, I think you've talked about it before, Laura, but what, we're, what makes the portrait a little bit different for us is it includes all of those items that the seven keys had in it mm -hmm. and, and those, those academic pieces, but what we're excited about is the, the social-emotional learning pieces of the portrait. So not only are we focused on, on the academics, which we have to keep our focus there, but we have a real focus now on some of the soft skills that our employees, our, our employers, our community members are saying students need to be successful when they leave us. So that's what really makes the portrait unique at this point. Great, well I, I know um, I've talked to some preschool parents and they're so excited that 
their three and four year olds are included in this portrait of a graduate and um, the skills that we're starting so early for them is, is great. And yeah. I know we, um, the, the board visited Glenwood Elementary Glenwood. School yes. yeah. and in one of the classrooms they had a poster. It said, um, working to become ethical people. And this was third grade. third grade. And the three characteristics that they had were respect, integrity, and empathy. Yeah. And then it was like, what does it look like and what does it sound like? And there were specific examples on this poster for the kids to see. And I'm like, wow, wow. that's a big concepts for third graders, yeah. but great that we are introducing these ideas and putting words to uh, behaviors for them. So I, I'm really excited. Yeah, it, and, it's, and it's nice in the fact that uh, it's just not one school doing it or, or one grade level doing it. It's really systemic across our district. We have a curriculum uh, that we've uh, bought and purchased and, and we're in that first year of it, but really seeing some neat things. It's heartwarming when you see kids talking about those type, types of things. And as I said, our portrait is, is spirals pre-K to 12. So uh, they'll start talking about empathy in third grade. They're gonna talk about empathy in middle school as well. And that just looks a little bit different at, that, at those different grade levels, but it won't be new to them. They're, they're, they will have known what that is, what it means to, what it means to be empathetic. So we're, we're pretty excited. So I think, again, I think that's what makes this portrait uh, just, just the next step for us above the seven keys in Oak Ridge 2020. Right, so when you developed the portrait, who was involved ah, in yeah. that process? Yeah, it was actually, I mean, it's, we're in this COVID time warp, but I mean, a lot of time uh, went into this, a lot of involvement of staff. Uh, we really want, we surveyed some of our community, community members, parents, uh, and pulled all of that information, kind of summarized what we thought we heard, got it back out to buildings and, and teachers and administrators to kind of hone it and tweak it a little bit until we kind of got down to those five pillars that we have. So uh, excited about it. And I think I've shared before, I think in any time in my career, this is uh, the most embedded, if you will, the, this portrait st strategic plan has been in, a, in a, any district that I've worked in. People are talking the language, you see it in the hallways, uh, really exciting. And we're excited where, where it's gonna head uh, after a few more years of this. Yeah, yeah, well I know in our visits in the classroom, I hear the teachers saying cooperate collaborate yeah, you know they're yeah, using yeah. these words even with young children right, right. Um, and and so I think it's it's going to flow as the kids grow yeah so and, and, and part of part of the questions that we had when we went out to staffs or or talked to administrators teachers is we really wanted them to take the mindset of you know if this was your child what experiences would you want them to have as they will go through a, a, a pre-K-12 school district and, and when they walk across the stage, they're gonna look like this or have these skills. So we try to really personalize it to say, think about your, your, your own child going through this district. How do you want them to experience school? What skills do you want them to have? Right, I think it's a, a, a great plan and uh, we'll look forward to watching yeah. as, um, as the kids grow and our, our staff gets gets better at yeah. implementing these different yeah. different techniques in the it's classroom. Gonna, it's gonna be and, exciting. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's exciting to see buy-in from our staff from pre preschool through high school. Yeah. So um, I think that, that speaks to good leadership that yeah. they are willing to, okay, we're gonna try something new and we're gonna address some of these issues. Yeah. I, I've so. heard more and more people talking about these transitions from pre-K to elementary, elementary to middle, middle to high school. And you know, these are, they're all of our, they're all our kids and all of our, our administrators and teachers know that. So it's this handoff from fourth grade to fifth grade. That's and a then big that one. handoff from eighth <laughs> To ninth, and and we have to follow that student all the way to make sure they're successful. So that mindset is is no longer just a silo of I'm at a middle school, I take care of my four grade levels. It's we, we know we're building something, and we're, we're eventually going to hand them off to the high school. So it's it's exciting work. Yeah, exciting work. That's good. That's yeah. good. Well, um, yeah, I'm happy, and I think um, with COVID. I th I think that everyone is realizing how important the social-emotional oh. aspect 
of, of reaching our kids is, and so I'm glad that we're including that into, into this yeah, program. Yeah, the, the, the mental health piece is a, is a big part of, of that SEL component, and it gives us a snapshot of how our kids are feeling, how they're doing, so it really has provided a lot of data that can help drive some building goals and building conversations around students and their right. needs. Good, good. So um, tell me just briefly about a couple new programs or new things that you're excited about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boy, there's a lot to be excited yeah, about. And, yeah. and I, I should say every time I, I highlight something or talk about something, the, whether it's a community presentation or something like that, I always, uh, yeah. I left something out. I didn't talk yeah, about yeah, something yeah. else. So I just want to preface it with, with that conversation. But uh, we, you probably, the community's probably heard about the, the new iSchool that, that we had a grant, that we won a grant for about $1.2 million from the state. And uh, Dr. Mark Buckner is the instructor in that program. And I'm just gonna read a couple of things for our okay. audience just so okay. they can hear what this is. But uh, the, the proposal we submitted uh, is where students are learning about systems thinking, design thinking, integrative thinking, wicked problem solving, lean and agile principles and methods, and the science of learning. Uh, so innovation, individualized, inclusion, interpersonal, integrative thinking, interdisciplinary, and always improving. Uh, and a lot of this will be on additive and subtractive uh, manufacturing. So that we have a fab lab that we uh, are building and at this time over in the G building, it looks fantastic. It's not done yet, but we hope to be, we will be up and running next fall and uh, just, just very excited. There, I'll just say there will be things happening in that room that are happening in very, very few high schools in this country. So it's well, just really I, I, I know at our, our board meetings, we've approved uh, um, purchasing all of this fancy equipment yeah. that um, many of us don't know exactly yeah. what it is. But um, <laughs> we're, we're going to see it in person. At some we're going to have it. Yes, and that's right. that might be a great focus on education uh, field trip yes, to, to yes. take um, and have these guys bring their cameras and yeah. uh, show all of us it, it, what it will um, be an amazing what is happening a, a amazing there. program when, when it's all said and done and up and running but uh, so that that's one thing I'm pretty excited about and then uh, another piece you know we all have seen the Ramsat project and uh, Mr. Livesey has been uh, key to that and, and many others obviously but uh, Mr. Livesey is now splitting time between Robertsville and Oak Ridge High School and uh, just some great things happening in the STEM lab down there. We're getting some great collaboration between our welding and his program. They're kind of going back and forth. We have advanced placement students, which we have a wonderful advanced placement program, uh, wanting to take welding along with their advanced placement. So that's, that's kind of been one of the critical pushes that, that I've seen uh, is that we want to give these students that are very, very intelligent, take all those AP classes, but then also get down there and maybe turn a wrench or do a project and, and do some welding or something like that. So that I'm really excited about that, and it's been, it's been a great mixture of kids back and forth. So yes. exciting to see that. Cool. Okay, good. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and we've got some other things that we want to talk about. Right. So we'll uh, sign off and take a break now. Thank you. Welcome back to Focus on Education and my guest, Dr. Bruce Borchardt. So when someone drives by many of our schools, they might see flags up on top of the roof, or they may see a dumpster out in the parking lot, or maybe even a bulldozer. Um, talk to me about some of the yeah. big capital things yeah. that are going on in or, our schools. Or, or cranes or, or you, you yeah. name it, uh, <laughs> which is other piles of stacks of things in the yeah. parking lot where you can't park at the high school. Uh, yeah, boy, it's hard to, to uh, give details for all of those things that are happening, but we, we've got a lot of things happening. So uh, we, we, I'll start with, uh, we're, we're kind of finishing up our ESG, our phase two uh, program of that. So still not completely done. COVID supply chain stuff has kind mm -hmm. of slowed some of that work down. Uh, so I, I guess I'll start off by uh, highlighting Robertsville Middle School. Um, I, I think if anybody uh, has driven by there, has seen it and saw the before, after, uh, it just has gone undergone a dramatic transportation uh, transformation. And every time I drive by, I can't help but smile uh, about what has happened there. And we've always said for years, because the inside of that school was updated during phase one and looked great, but 
we, we never could get to where we wanted the outside to mirror what was happening on the inside. And there's such great things happening there. So uh, that was uh, truly during COVID time, but, but, it, but we're still not quite finished with phase two of ESG, but just very excited for Robertsville. And I think it's created some, some more pride uh, there in that community and just driving by. We're not done yet. Uh, if, if people are familiar with the dock area where the cafeteria is, that still has a lot of work yet to do. So it might look done, but it's not. So it's going to get even better. Uh, well, I, I noticed on the, um, the school mm -hmm. website we have, uh, I don't know when this was put on, <laughs> but there's a video using a drone and it shows the uh, several of the buildings and Robertsville uh, is one of them. So if you can't um, go and drive by the building, you can look at you our website out. and see this uh, drone video of the outside yeah, of Robertsville. Yeah, so yeah. It does look great. So, yeah, we're, we're just very pleased and happy. And again, thank, thank the city for partnering uh, with us uh, to make that happen. So uh, very excited. We actually had a meeting today with ESG to talk about the energy savings and we are uh, exceeding all of the, the uh, savings they, that they thought we would have. So we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, yeah, and back to your point, uh, we have countless HVAC uh, rooftop units being taken off, put on, uh, which is all a good thing. And, and in all of, during all that time, uh, we're playing that out with all of our roof updates. Yeah. So we want to again thank the city. Uh, they did a study a few years ago that kind of uh, ranked all the roofs of the schools of city buildings and we're kind of just uh, going through that list with highest priority to, to lowest priority and they have many roof projects happening that needed to happen for a long time. Yeah, and they were it, overdue. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we'd have, we, you knew where the leaks were coming from and uh, Willowbrook was one example of that we had just way too many leaks there and now it's, uh, it's just excellent to have a brand new roof on some of those buildings. So uh, as we go over the next couple of years, we hope to have brand new roofs on most of our buildings. This Oak Ridge High School is having it right now. Not yeah. all of it, but as you can see from the parking lot, there are stacks and materials there. So we're taking the worst sections right now. And then when we redo that roof section, we're doing the HVAC in that section as well. Okay. That uh, so, so yeah, just just a, a lot happening, but but it's definitely going to help us long range as we talk about budget and planning uh, to knock out some of these high needs is is uh, critical for us so that we can spend money on on other things down the road. And I'll you know if Mr. Thacker was here, he would remind me. Uh, you know, we've got about 400 HVAC units throughout the district. So it, you, sometimes when you're just going to your one school, you, you, you don't think about all of the HVAC needs that we would have ac across the district. Uh, and they all vary in the years of when their lifetime uh, is, is going to be over. So uh, it, it, there's just a constant, constant battle. Every year we'll have more HV HVAC next year uh, of replacing that on, on a regular basis. So yeah, mainly uh, HVAC and uh, roofing right now, but we have another great big project uh, real close by to us here at Oak Ridge High School, and that's the track. Yeah, uh, very a bulldozer over yeah, there. <laughs> very good. Very well, you better get working because they, they have a. Uh, I'm sure the question will be when's it going to be done, uh, and and well, they're set for June, middle of June. That's their target right now, uh, given rain, storm, things like that. Right. But, but mid-June is when they said they're going to be completed. So uh, uh, long needed project. I, I think it's a wonderful project. It will be uh, a top-notch facility. And then we kind of call this the track and what's happening now kind of phase one because we'd like to look at concession and other buildings surrounding it, uh, bleachers uh, mm -hmm. on down the road. But uh, we will have one beautiful track. And I, and I thank our, our track coaches for uh, being patient as we work yeah. through and how to make this happen. Uh, I feel badly the track got to the condition it did get to uh, without us replacing it, but that's all behind us now and, and we're going to yeah. focus on having a wonderful, wonderful facility and the track coaches are, are doing the same thing. They're, they're just so happy to have what's coming to them and, they're, and their students uh, more than anything. Right. And so, we were able to deal with the drainage issue, yeah. which um, was big. Yes. And that yes. the creek. Moved it away there. from the creek. Yeah. 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 So um, I think um, this is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no so small project, but it's going it, yeah, to. And it's I, big, yeah. I have to thank Mr. Thacker and the, again the track coaches. They've they've been wonderful and and uh, supportive and uh, for really uh, making this project work. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to jump to on the east end of town and on the far west end of town. There's like houses coming up like weeds. 
So how is all of this affecting our schools yes. and and what are you thinking it's going to uh, happen yeah you know it's uh, if anything keeps me up at night this is one of those topics that, that does that and uh, uh, the the West End yeah it, it, there's growth everywhere obviously yeah. uh, our, our biggest worry right now is, as we've done some studies is the West End uh, mm -hmm. and the impact that that's having on on Linden and Willowbrook and Robertsville and uh, we're seeing Linden starting to fill up and as, as you know, Laura, we've uh, done a study with COPE on uh, capacity studies of how many seats we have in each building. And we have some long range plans on, you know, if this continues, this growth, and I think it will, uh, if this growth continues to happen, uh, we have some contingency plans, some, some plans of, okay, it could be a school, it could be an addition to a school. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say it here, but I don't ever want to talk about it, but, uh, you know, boundary lines uh, for, for, our, for our buildings. I, I hope we don't get to the point where we have to move a boundary line. Uh, my hope would be that it, we'd have clear data to say X number of students are coming, we need to build something. Because uh, I think boundary, anytime you, you do boundary changes, it impacts families and students and nobody wants to do it's that. Hard. Yeah. Sometimes it's necessary. Uh, we'd rather not do it. I know the board would rather not yeah. engage in that yeah. <laughs> activity and either would I. Uh, but you know, the reality is it, it could come to having that type of discussion. But right now we're monitoring the data looking where they're coming. Uh, as you know, we showed the board a new software tool that we have that plots every student uh, in the city where they're at and in real time we can draw on that computer, if you will, yeah. uh, where we might draw a line or if we moved a line, it will automatically populate how many students, you know, who they are, what, and, and all of the different data that goes through uh, with that student is captured there. So. I believe we have the tools in place uh, when that time comes uh, to, to, to deal with that. And my hope is that it's just really clear that we've got so many students that we just have to, have to do this. And, and as you know, uh, Ms. McLean, we, we talked about, uh, and, and this is kind of a scary number, but and I'll, I'm, I'm, it's not the perfect no, exact number, yeah. but we had about 550 new, to, new students to us this year, right. which is really scary. But the, the other piece of that is we lost about 400. Yeah. So uh, the worry for me and what keeps me up at night is what if we stop losing kids right. and this new number keeps coming? So that, that would fill up an elementary or a, an addition to middle school really quickly. Uh, so yeah, rambling answer to your question there. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, we're watching it for the first time in a long time. This is a good problem to have. It's a, yeah, it's uh, exciting, but uh, like you say, um, and schools aren't built overnight, yeah. and so yeah. um, it's it's hard to know when yeah. to pull the trigger. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and I think you know another year of data, watching the preserve. You know, if we track that from three years ago till now, you know, we can see that growth. So if we can start to develop a trend, you know, line of okay, th this is really happening. You know, and then the announcement of uh, some more business out towards the west yes. side of town those people have to live somewhere. So, right. so I think the preserve will be building homes for, for quite a while right. here. So, right. so I think we're like busing a hundred. I guess a little over a hundred, like 115, yeah. but, but it used to be seven, Yes. you yes. know, years so ago. There are kids down there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So yeah, it's a, an, it's an exciting problem. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Much okay. rather do that than have a declining. Definitely. Enrollment. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So my final, you know, question for you is what kind of things are you dreaming about? Uh, ah. New, or do you have some new ideas or new programs or? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's a good question. You know, we, we, we have so much to offer students here. Uh, and, and if students would go to another high school, they'd see just how much we have to offer our students at, at all levels. Uh, but as we think of uh, the high school level, you know, we really, a lot of it is we want to get better at getting better mm -hmm. and, and improving our current programs. We don't, we don't want to add too many programs that will dilute uh, right. some of the other programs. But I guess uh, one of the things I'd like to do is, is, is continue to build on our aviation program. We've got some great uh, middle school drone things happening yeah. and, and uh, I'd like to see us build on that. That's a great career field and it's, there's various parts of the, in that career field for numerous different students with numerous different skills. So that's one area I'd like to see us uh, uh, engage in. 
Uh, we've always talked about HVAC plumbing and the need for that and with all the housing, uh, that, that's a possibility that we could have something like that. Um, but I think more importantly for me, and, and I was recently at a conference in Nashville and they, they said, I think the stat was 40% of uh, students who graduate with a four-year degree end up being underemployed in a field that didn't need a college education. So 40% of students across the country are going to college, getting a four-year degree, and ending up working in a field that, that didn't need a four-year degree. So as we talk about the portrait, I'll kind of pull it together really asking kids and families, you know, what is it you want to do? The career inventories that we do through the portrait and really making sure our students and families know what they're doing, what, what they're going into, what their interests are. Are there jobs there? Are there careers there? Are there careers in this community, in this region? So really trying to educate students and families on, on what's out there. And, and again, it's hard to in this world we're in, uh, four years from now, you don't know what the new job is going to right. be. So it goes back to that portrait throw of giving them those skills, the critical thinking, collaboration, all of those different things that regardless of field, those skills will help them to adapt to a new, a new job or relearn to get a new skill. So that's a long way to answer your question, but, but that's why we really want to focus that portrait on that whole child and giving them those skills that will help them walk across that stage and help them be successful. Yeah, well, that sounds fabulous. And yeah. I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of this. And um, thank you so yeah. much for being here. I see good things happening <laughs> all around us. That's, that's great. Okay. And if I can say one yeah. thing, Laura, sure. I just want to thank our staff uh, for what they've been through these last two years. Uh, they have done an amazing job. You heard about learning loss. That didn't happen here. We had some, but I'm telling you what, we had, we had some amazing work happen in the last two years, and I can't thank staff, our teacher leaders, and administrators uh, enough, and, and the team that I, that I have with me. They're unbelievable people, and I'm blessed to be here. Yeah, well, I've, just yesterday, I had two different people come to, up to me and say, thank you for keeping the schools open. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. We're so proud yeah. of Oak Ridge for biting the bullet and doing what it takes. Yeah. And, and a lot of that came from preparation that we didn't know exactly what we were preparing <laughs> Absolutely. for. But, Absolutely. Um, well, great. I think um, good things are happening here, and it's they been are. a team. Absolutely. And we'll continue to have that team working together. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This is the end of Focus on Ed. We'll uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.